You're invited to imagine what's next. Well, the next view you wake up to will be where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain and your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com The mandate to govern Karnataka has passed on to the Indian National Congress. And a big change brings with it big hopes. Today, we put the spotlight on the state's shining jewel, Bengaluru. A capital city which wears contradictory titles of being the world's fastest growing IT city, where its California-like weather and a large pool of young tech talent has drawn over 6,000 corporations to set up base. In the same breath, and it's a little bit of a nasty breath, the city has managed to slip to the rank of being the least livable city in India and amongst the lowest in the world in the Economist Intelligence Unit's Global Livability Index 2022. The new government has its task cut out to revive Bengaluru's mojo and salvage its reputation. Which are the key urban and civic issues which it must prioritize? Joining me for this critical discussion are Professor Rajiv Gowda, former Rajya Sabha MP and national spokesperson for AICC. More importantly, Professor Gowda has a deep connect with the residents of Bengaluru with his tireless engagement with them over the years with his initiative, Better Bengaluru. Thank you, Professor Gowda, for making the time. Also with us, Srikant Vishwanathan, CEO of Janagraha, Centre for Citizenship and Democracy, an organisation working closely both at the grassroots levels and with the state governments to improve India's cities. Srikant, good to have you with us. We also welcome Nirupa Shankar, Joint MD Brigade Group, a real estate company that needs no introduction. They've given the city its famous Brigade Road along with world-class offices, homes and malls. Nirupa, thank you for making the time. I'm going to dive straight into the discussion, Professor Gowda. The civic woes of Bengaluru have made headlines over the past few years, but I'd like to understand from you what should and will be the priority for the new government in charge. Let me lay out the top five. The first, of course, is transportation. We have to, have to move people and move them efficiently, swiftly, without uh, having them waste huge, huge amounts of time in um, traffic jams, etc. Uh, the second major thing is infrastructure of a variety of kinds, but um, uh, especially focused on uh, civic amenities, roads, walkable cities, uh, you know, all, a variety of infrastructure is required. Uh, the third would be to deliver administration efficiently. Um, in the Congress manifesto, we've talked about bringing a variety of parastatals, um, you know, the transport organization, the water supply and sewage management organization, everything under one umbrella. Right now, everyone does their own thing. One uh, agency lays a new road, another agency comes and cuts it up, digs it up. That sort of thing happens. Another huge challenge for such a modern city is waste management and sewage treatment. That is, again, another issue that uh, really bothers us. And the fifth is about uh, administering, you know, uh, strengthening the uh, Brihat Bengaluru Munis, uh, Mahanagara Palike Municipal Corporation, uh, st you know, streamlining and involving public in inputs uh, right from ward committees uh, and having empowered um, administration, um, making sure that the planning and other bodies, the Metropolitan uh, Planning Authority, the Transportation Authority, all of these have some teeth, actually meet and get things done. So these four or five domains are very, very important to us. And most importantly, we need to pay attention to nature, ecosystems, and ensure that when rainwater falls, it's, it, we actually are able to manage it rather than letting people's homes and basements and vehicles get flooded. I'll mm. stop there for a start. All right. You've actually set the stage beautifully and I'm going to probably break each of these down and try and cover as many as we can on today's show. Before I ask uh, or direct my next question, let's also tell all our viewers why Bengaluru needs to be taken so seriously. Now, 
a jump from ninth position a decade ago to second position in the financial year 2022 karnataka state ranks first in software and service exports and we know that an overwhelming majority of this comes from the state's capital bengaluru now the state reported it exports worth us dollar 58 billion in again financial year 2022 now as employment increases so does the need for transportation and the city is adding overwhelming numbers of vehicles on its roads every month, mostly private cars and two-wheelers. According to data released in November last year by the State Traffic Department, Bengaluru now has over 1 crore vehicles on its roads and around 50,000 new vehicles on an average are registered every month. No wonder the TomTom Tom traffic index has mapped Bengaluru as the second slowest moving city of the world. The capital of Karnataka recorded a travel time of 29 minutes and 10 seconds to drive a distance of 10 kilometers in the year 2022. Shrikant, the vehicle density is mind-boggling considering the roads in Bengaluru are not built to take that pressure. What do you think the city planners have missed so far and the infrastructure projects which are lined up? Are they enough to take care of it? So I'll answer it in two two different ways, uh, Manisha. One is, I don't think it's an infrastructure problem alone. As Professor Grauda said, it's primarily a governance problem. There's no global city anywhere in the world which is governed by the provincial government, which is governed by the, by the state government. Uh, we need a city government to govern the city. So we need to have elections uh, held uh, in the BBMP. We need the BBMP to be empowered. So we don't need to do radical reforms, but there are those practices existing in... Uh, in other parts of India, besides, of course, the need to strengthen participatory governance, uh, not to make this a top-down administrative and governance system, but to involve people in neighborhoods. Uh, the second aspect, more infrastructure-oriented. I'd say there are two, three elements. One is roads. The second is uh, 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 ensuring that people live, work, and play within a certain vicinity, say, of a 15-minute or a 20-minute uh, neighborhood. Uh, uh, I think those two dimensions become quite important. And thirdly, first mile and last mile uh, connectivity. Uh, Bangalore can easily become one of the world's most walkable cities. It, it, has, it has a gifted weather to, to live for. There's no other city in India uh, which can become 100% walkable. Bangalore can pretty much any time of the year without breaking a sweat. You could work, you know, you could walk throughout the day uh, for, for most parts of the year. So I think making Bangalore a walkable city, focusing on 15-minute or 20-minute neighborhoods uh, and focusing on bus transport and first and last mile connectivity to the metro, which comes with walkable footpaths is, uh, is key. And Manisha, I just want to add one point, right? The question of vehicle density could easily be thought of as a somewhat elitist problem faced only by motor vehicle users. It does affect uh, bus transport significantly more than private transport users. And the second thing is the importance of easy connectivity is even more for women, is even more for the urban poor. So I would look at it principally as an equity problem and, and as an environment problem and as an uh, uh, economy problem getting more women into the workforce. Uh, and, I, and I would agree with you, it is all these three problems. It's also a health problem. Uh, Nirupa, here's my question to you. Uh, these are not unknown. The fact that we need last mile connectivity, the fact that we need to boost public transportation by many X's, right? Uh, and you're hosting clients in various parts of the city, Hebel, Whitefield, all the main IT hubs. Employees have been hugely affected both mentally the air, air pollution is you know deteriorating or increasing what's your view on the traffic solution is it like you know the three big infrastructure projects that we are talking about phase two expansion of nama metro suburban rail project the peripheral ring road project do you think these will ease up the traffic at all somewhat what more should be done yeah, thanks, Manisha. And uh, great points mentioned before. Um, I do agree that, you know, our infrastructure in terms of road widening has to happen uh, significantly. There has to be like large road widening exercises. Um, just to take an example, uh, you know, suppose if you look at the Telangana government, like what they've done in Hyderabad is create these 100 feet roads everywhere. And then um, the entire city is like, let's build the infrastructure and then the development will happen. 
and i think that concept when you go look at it is is amazing so of course the road widening has to happen in a much greater fashion what we are doing as builders is and you know to some extent of course development is part of the problem there is a lot of people migrating into the city there's rapid urbanization happening a lot of co2 emissions due to all the development so development is part of the problem but development is going to happen whether we like it or not so the best thing we can do is to build in a responsible manner one way we are sort of combating that is doing this live work play concept of creating mixed use developments where you have your offices you have social infrastructure built next to the office and you have residential homes built next to um next to the office and the social infrastructure so as builders we can do it in a smaller way but of course and you know when you build these smaller uh, smart cities or these smaller townships they could be 100 acres 200 acres um but it is being done in a smaller way larger roads vehicular movement how is the traffic movement going to happen in the project how is the pedestrian movement happening so it requires um a good set of urban planners to sort of plan the entire vehicular movement of the city apart from of course road widening has to happen of course metro has to happen but these are all playing catch up to where we needed them about 5 to 7 years ago so we need to sort of um move accelerate. ahead you know be ahead of the curve accelerate and be ahead of the curve so a lot of catching up and moving ahead in developing futuristic uh, plans is what the new government needs to do uh, i'm going to come back to you professor gowda now you know <laughs> the numbers came out results came out and swaraj magazine was already out with an article saying that many of the infrastructure projects are now going to suffer and get re- derailed you're talking about the fact that administration is so important having a cohesive committee or you know one single point of authority which is looking at the city comprehensively is also extremely important but if i'm this is known for a while isn't it to get bbmp to talk to bmtc or bmrcl i'm looking at the list of bms in front of me and saying how will you even make that possible it requires something called political will which we in the congress have in abundance so i wouldn't really worry about that i think we've already announced plans i'm in charge of a vision bengaluru manifesto as well and so we've been putting a lot of effort working with a variety of experts we uh, will be uh, we since the bbmp election got postponed we haven't actually reached out to my fellow panelists and other stakeholders and we will actually create not just a vision but an actionable vision and many of our leaders who have been re-elected from bengaluru who have been in charge of the bengaluru city portfolio in previous governments they have tremendous experience they understand the roadblocks they understand the way to overcome those roadblocks so i think we are very very uh, are, you know cognizant of the fact that if bengaluru has grown over the years is substantially due to various congress governments uh, especially uh, starting with the time when mr sm krishna was our chief minister 99 to 2004 the uh, resurgence of urban india in some ways uh, started around that period and um, which was continued under dr manmohan singh's uh, jnn urm uh, program so there was a lot of effort on those on those fronts but um along with that we will also need to you know to take the stick one example um uh, transportation multimodal connectivity mm-hmm. right it could be a uh, road transport it could be metro it could be um uh, what shall we say suburban rail utilizing the existing rail infrastructure better and to uh, find ways to integrate these so that people can seamlessly move across the moment we start providing um what shall we say affordable reliable safe and clean uh, transport options public transport options uh, people will start uh, moving on to uh, public transport and st- mm. and leaving their private vehicles behind negotiating traffic is a stressful activity why would people <laughs> go for that when you well, actually well we hope you can uh, professor gowda we hope it's music to our ears and we hope that you know uh, where there's a will there is a way but you know there are many more issues to be addressed when we return we will focus on the two other big issues that bengaluru's new government must find solutions for one is water scarcity with depleting ga- ground water and on the other hand the city is also getting flooded with huge encroachments on storm water drains so stay with us we'll come back and address that big headline which kind of hit all of us last year
You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com With the recent elections in Karnataka, there's a definite change in guard. Now, what are the aspirations of the state capital Bengaluru, which has been a whopping contributor to Karnataka's GDP and tax revenues and also to the nation as a whole? We shift our focus from traffic woes, which we spoke to the panelists about, to water woes. Too little of it in normal times and too much of it when there's a downpour in the parts of the city. With us, Professor Rajiv Gowda, Srikant Vishwanathan and Nirupa Shankar. Nirupa, this one is for you. You know, last August, in the wake of massive flooding across the city, the BBMP identified 15 encroachments by major builders and IT parks uh, in the Madhavpura, Mahadevpura zone. Now, high-profile builders and developers were on the list of alleged encroachers. Brigade was not one of them. I'd like to make it very, uh, you know, obvious to our viewers. I'd like you to put on your industry hat and tell us why does this even happen? Yes, um, you know, there are two two sides to the story. One is, you know, if you're a responsible developer, see most, I would say the generally, most of the large listed entities are generally, we have to follow all the rules. I mean, that that is, uh, you don't get your approvals if that is not done. But sometimes what happens is the nalas around the property, you know, if even if there's no flooding within a certain property, once it connects to the outside stormwater drain, there could be a lot of blockages that could happen and that leads to a lot of flooding. So one way to prepare for the prepare for the rains is to sort of have some sort have technology that can go through all the all the nalas to ensure that there is no blockage. And typically what happens is Sometimes private builders might have larger stormwater drains, then they connect to smaller stormwater drains, and then there's an over flooding happening. Um, you know, the flooding in what happened last year was due to some blockages again in certain nalas. So one way to just sort of rectify this is mm. to ensure that the stormwater drain is wide enough to take the kind of uh, rainwater flow that is coming through and ensure that there are no blockages anywhere. That, that Usually okay. the flooding happens when there's some sort of blockage somewhere. Okay, let me ask you the other question. On and off when I've gone to Bengaluru to interview people and walked into large tech parks, more often than not, I've seen water tankers coming in and supplying water. How bad is the problem and is this a priority for you? No, it's definitely a priority because if you don't have proper water uh, connectivity and, uh, you know, either for your residents or for your clients uh, in your office tech parks, it's a huge issue. I mean, so, but... It can be combated. For instance, if you follow the proper rainwater harvesting policies that are there, um, in many of our tech parks, we have water surplus. We haven't asked even clients like to pay for water because we have surplus water. We haven't taken water from uh, uh, bore wells or we haven't taken water from tankers or we haven't taken uh, water even from uh, BWSSB. It's all in-house because we've harnessed the water in the right manner. So if you harness the water and harvest it in the right manner, you can be surplus. For instance, okay. even the airport. Devanali was a, a water scarce location, but for instance, where uh, bile has come up, it's they now have water surplus. So hmm. just through doing water recharge pits and proper water harvesting, so it's possible. So that's a problem which is actually immediately addressable and all that it needs is people to be cognizant of the fact. Uh, Shrikant, let me then move the conversation from water to a very important one. You spoke about planning of the city. Uh, where is the plan? I mean, the revised master plan of 2031, I don't think it's seen the light of day. What are we basing planning off of Bengaluru to meet its future requirements? Bangalore is one of those cities which has grown somewhat organically, uh, not because of the plan, but in some ways despite uh, the plan. So there's a serious, there's a serious lack of imagination and also uh, even basic laws and regulations relating to urban planning and design. Uh, I think design is equally important. Many times we focus on planning, uh, which is which may, which is thought of as a 20 year uh, single regulatory land use document. And we don't focus enough on on design, which in some ways bridges urban planning to uh, citizen experience of uh, infrastructure in a city. 
So we have a problem with uh, laws and regulations. We have a problem with availability of talent, something that Nirupa spoke about. We need significantly larger number of urban planners and designers, even within city governments and partnerships with outside entities. Uh, our own organization has worked very closely uh, with the state government and the BBMP on, on, on the Tendershaw project. Uh, and Bangalore today has the largest network of, uh, uh, of walkable designed footpaths uh, uh, in the core of the city. So it is possible. Bangalore itself has established a track record of these partnerships uh, in the past. Uh, but I do feel fragmentation of governance of the city and over dependence on the state government is not going to be viable for Bangalore to deliver to its citizens and to investors. Bangalore needs to govern itself, which means the BBMP elections need to be held. And uh, between the BDA, BWSSB and DMTC, the state government needs to find an elegant organization design to empower the mayor and the chief commissioner of the BBMP to have management supervision over these organizations. Professor Gowda, you've you know, heard uh, Shrikant's views. All of this is possible or does it look like a very Herculean task? We'll need a lot of people because, I mean, if I'm looking at uh, the the winds in the city of Bengaluru, BJP, MLA still seem to be holding a sway just for that city. Will you be able to bring everybody on the table? I think the people of Bangalore have been demanding better governance, infrastructure, easier and quicker travel, all these sorts of things, you know, improved governance. So I think every single MLA, regardless of party, is very much aware of what needs to be done. And I think, um, you know, if we all together work and deliver, uh, it, it's good for them too. All right. So, uh, Shrikant has already encapsulated what he wants. But Nirupa, I'm going to end with you. Three biggest things that you'd like this government to address and we'll wrap out from the show. Um, I won't. I mean, it's the same thing that every citizen wants, right? They want to be able to live in a... Um, healthy and safe environment. We've already spoken about water and roads, so I won't talk about that. But definitely, you know, from a, a health perspective, I think air quality and the pollution, if we can do something to help the air quality, that's important. I think every Bangalorean, I've, I'm a Bangalorean who's been born and brought up here. Uh, we all miss the green in the city. There is, as I mentioned, a lot of a lot of development, but we can build in a responsible manner. So if we can green, green our cities, get back our gardens, get back our trees, uh, and that makes. would be amazing for all of us. We all want our uh, walking cities. But as a woman, I'm going to say, um, you know, I love this city, but uh, I wish it was a little safer for women. And uh, I would like to focus on the safety of women and everybody else, of course. But uh, of course, uh, as the city grows, the kind of crime rate that we're seeing uh, is also growing. And I think, um, like I said, as a female in Bangalore, this is what we would like. Safety, absolutely very important. Health, very important. And I think a lot of it can be resolved by taking care of the traffic woes as well, at least on the air pollution front. Thank you to all of you uh, for making the time for this very important discussion. And let's keep our fingers crossed. We meet six months later. We'll have better conversations, uh, positive conversations saying, look, so much ground has already been covered. The elections of uh, BBMP will be done. Uh, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, we are wrapping up this edition of the show, hoping Bengaluru gets its share of infrastructure and civic attention that it truly deserves. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye. You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain and your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com